This is Joseph Pipitone with Scalability Experts, and this video is going to cover configuring Veeam Backup and Replication 6.5 with an application group, a virtual lab, and a sure backup job for advanced SQL item level recovery. Okay, so in this video, we're going to cover some advanced restoration techniques, uh, one in particular, the SQL Air Wizard. And with this recovery wizard, we can restore database objects and tables or we can execute a custom query against the database from the backup. It's going to allow us to restore specific data back to the production SQL Server database, or we can save it as a data file to execute at a later time. In order to recover items from SQL, we need to configure a few things first. Let me show you here in the backup job uh, one of the more important features that must be configured here. What we want to make sure of in the backup job is that you have application-aware image processing enabled. This is going to allow us to create a transactionally consistent backup of a virtual machine running a VSS-aware application or volume shadow copy. Such applications are Active Directory, Microsoft SQL, Microsoft Exchange, and SharePoint as well. And this will allow us to get the latest and greatest backup without actually having to shut down these services or the virtual machine itself. Uh, this uh, uses a Veeam proprietary technology that enables us to ensure successful VM recovery as well as proper recovery of any and all applications uh, without any data loss. So we want to make sure that this is checked. So I'm going to cancel out of this because I know that the backup job has been running for quite some time with that option enabled. Now what we need to first do is click on this backup infrastructure here and now in order to create this virtual lab, uh, we need to have an application group. In this case, we're going to be working with SQL. And inside of an application group, if I add an application group here, let's call this SQL Data Recovery Demo. Application group. Okay. An application group is actually going to define the virtual machines that are running production applications. Uh, there may be other virtual machines that your production application relies on, such as an Active Directory server. If you're working with Exchange, it would be Exchange in that case. Uh, so for these purposes, we want to make sure that when the virtual machine boots up, in, in our case, the database server, uh, we want to make sure that it can contact an Active Directory domain controller or if we're using a DHCP server, for instance, then we're going to go ahead and add that domain controller into this application group. Now, this is not required for a SQL restoration. Uh, however, I like to play it safe, and I'm going to add the domain controller to this application group. So when I'm ready to add these virtual machines to this application group, I'll click this Add VM button. Now, I have two options. One is from VI, or from Virtual Infrastructure, and the other one is from Backups. I want to make sure that since it is 4.30 and people are still working, I want to make sure that I, I, I put the least amount of stress in our virtual environment as possible. And so I'm just going to use the backups that we have. First, I'm going to select the domain controller and add that. And then I'm going to select the SQL server that we're going to be restoring to. And here's a role column. I'm going to specify that the Active Directory server that I added is a DNS server, a domain controller, and a global catalog. And I'm going to specify that this database server is just a SQL server. And that's it for that step. Move on to the next and click Finish. Now, like I said before, an Active Directory server is not required when you're restoring SQL. And so the next step is we need to create a virtual lab. And what a virtual lab is, is an isolated environment where we are actually loading virtual machines into this virtual lab. We're creating a proxy. And so what that essentially means is our virtual lab environment is going to communicate with the production environment using a proxy in between. And we'll get into more of that later on through this video. Let's add a virtual lab and call this SQL Recovery Demo Virtual Lab. 
And now we just need to specify a host that we want this virtual lab to run on. So this virtual lab is going to consist of any virtual machines that I specified in the application group. So I have an Active Directory server and a SQL server, and they're both going to be powered on in this virtual lab environment, which is completely isolated from production. Okay, so let's pick, uh, let's pick one host. I'll pick dot 10. So when I create this virtual lab, it's going to create a resource pool. And inside that resource pool, we will see the proxy that Veeam is creating. I'll pick a data store that has uh, 1.9 terabytes free. That'll do. So this proxy appliance that we're configuring in the next step is going to provide Veeam with access to all the virtual machines running in the isolated virtual lab. And it's also going to let these isolated virtual machines talk to the production environment. Our production network happens to be VM network. And I'm going to configure an IP address manually. If you have a DHCP server, you can do that. And that is also another good reason to add your domain controller, if it is a DHCP server, to your application group. But in our case, let's just configure a static IP. Let's give it 95. I know the gateway is .15. And our first DNS server is .8. And our alternate is .5. So I know that when this proxy comes up, it's going to have an IP address of .95. Uh, and we're working with a single subnet in this case. Now, with a basic automatic configuration, Veeam will try to configure the entire virtual lab itself, but I like to have a little bit more control, so I'll pick manual. And you want to make sure that your VLAN ID is the same as your production network, uh, and you could check that in vCenter here. Click on the host. Networking. And here is our VM network, so I'll view the properties. And right here, VLAN ID is set to zero, none. So we're good there. Back to the Veeam server. So now we're ready to configure the VNIC, uh, which is going to let us connect the isolated network to the proxy appliance virtual machine. And this is going to allow network masquerading, which is going to assign an IP address, and it's going to masquerade that IP address uh, so we're going to be able to access these virtual machines through the proxy. And so we'll go ahead and click Edit. So this IP address here that we have to input is going to be the default gateway of our production network, which in this case is .15. Correct the network mask. And now the masquerade network address. So if you have a domain controller that is 192.168.0.10, for example, then this is going to masquerade the IP address as 192.168.255.10. Now, if we were using DHCP, we could manually input the name servers here, but we're not going to utilize DHCP since we are configuring a static IP on the proxy appliance. Here, we're just shown a brief summary of the virtual lab config. And what this is doing is creating a resource pool and it's also creating a virtual machine appliance, which is going to serve as the proxy. It's also going to create a virtual switch, which allows the production network to be isolated from this virtual lab network. Okay, the virtual lab has been created. I'll go to vCenter. And here you can see the resource pool. And here's the virtual appliance, which is our proxy. So I'll go back to Veeam and click Finish. We need to create a sure backup job. So a sure backup job is going to have an application group associated with it. And what this job is going to do is aggregate all of the settings and policies of a recovery verification task, such as an application group and virtual lab to be used while we recover from within this virtual environment back to production. So let's call this backup job SQL Recovery Demo. Here's our virtual lab that we created. And let's associate the SQL data recovery demo with this sure backup job.
Now, this is important. We want to keep this application group running once the job completes. This job will be an on-demand job that will run as soon as we make the request from the Veeam Enterprise Manager. If we check this box here to keep the application group running once the job completes, we'll be able to perform the item level restore from our virtual lab environment over to production. If the application group stops running, we will not be able to restore from the isolated virtual lab back over to production. And we don't need to run this automatically, it's on demand. And click finish. So there we have it here. So now that we have this virtual lab environment set up, let's go back and take a look at the database table here. Uh, this just contains a few records. Let's go ahead and delete this table. Now this is a production resource, and I'm deleting this table, so this table is gone from this database. And what we'd like to do is restore this table back from our backups that ran last night back over into production. So let's go back over to the Veeam server, and I'm going to start the SQL Server Application Item Recovery Wizard. And this is going to allow us to specify the SQL Server that we would like to work with. And it will also request a virtual lab. And let's keep the duration at 30 minutes. We could always extend this if we run out of time. And the server name that we're going to be working with is the database server here. And the latest backup has the table that I need. And we'll click Finish. Now we should see something pop up down here in the taskbar that says that the virtual lab is being requested and now it's pending. Your Veeam administrator can do this via the Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. We'll click on the Requests tab and here is the lab request. Duration is 30 minutes and the state is pending. Let's go ahead and approve this request. Let's keep our defaults and this is the virtual machine name that we have in our backups and the backup server and how many restore points we have. I know last night's backup contains that database table that we previously deleted so I'll just pick that one and click next. And here is the sure backup job that we created and the job state which is currently stopped. So let's go ahead and select that sure backup job and click finish. And now that we've approved this request, we can go back to Veeam Backup and Replication, and let's take a look. And here you can see down here the virtual lab was approved. And it says not ready because the sure backup job has not ran yet. So once the sure backup job runs, it will essentially start these two virtual machines up in an isolated virtual lab environment. And then we could use the SQL wizard to actually restore individual items back into that database, in this case, a database table. So the sure backup job started. Let's take a look at the statistics, and we could see exactly what's happening here. It looks like it's starting the domain controller, and it will actually publish the domain controller with a unique name. What it's actually doing is it's starting the proxy appliance first. As you can see here, it's powered on. And then what it's going to do is it's going to create the domain controller and the database server that I have configured in the application group. And it's going to create those as virtual machines in our cluster. However, they're going to have unique names. And after it starts the virtual machine, it'll wait and it will perform a heartbeat test and a ping test just to make sure that everything is A-OK. -okay and it will be able to determine whether or not it's able to communicate through our proxy. Here you can see that Veeam created a virtual machine with a different unique ID here. Uh, this way we don't confuse it with our production resource. Here we can see as it's going through its test here, it looks like the heartbeat status was a success, the ping was a success, and we're not running any scripts 
Uh, and so what it's going to do is move on to the next server, which is our database server. Okay, looks like everything passed with success. And now it's moving on to the database server. Okay, looks like we have some pretty good pass rates here. Success on all counts. And we have one last test to go. So it looks like our lab is ready to go. And we could launch the SQL recovery wizard uh, two different ways here. We could click on the database server in our virtual lab and we could right click and go to SQL item recovery. We could also go down here to the virtual lab manager and we could scroll down to see that the virtual lab is ready for another 28 minutes and we could just click on open. But for simplicity's sake I'm just going to launch the SQL item recovery by right clicking and selecting that option here. And now here is the backup server name and this is the masqueraded IP address of the backup server. Uh, which is completely isolated from our production environment and the only way that it can talk to production is if it goes through the proxy that we created in an earlier step. Production server name and the authentication we're just going to use Windows authentication. Now if you don't have a domain controller as part of your application group this will still work as long as your credentials are cached on that database server. So we're presented with three different options here. We can restore the database schema, we could restore the database tables, or we could restore a SQL query result. In this demonstration, let's just restore the database tables. So the next step here is to select the restore target. In this case, we want to restore it back to our production database. And let's pick the backup database name, which is VeeamTemp, and the production database is also VeeamTemp. And this step of the wizard is going to retrieve data and compare the SQL Server and the virtual lab environment to the production environment. And this gives you the option to customize naming, uh, which we are not going to do. We want the table to go back with its original name, so we'll click Next. And this allows you to select different file groups. In our case, I'm just going to preserve the file group and the partition table. Click Next. And when I click Restore, it is restoring the table back to production. And it looks like it was successful. So let's go back to our database server. And let's do a refresh. And there's the table back in production. And so we are finished up with that part of the restoration. So I'm going to go back to the Veeam server and click Finish. And we're done with this virtual lab. That was the only item that I needed to restore. If there were other tables, I could go ahead and continue on. But in this case, I just wanted to show you how we can use this SQL Air Wizard to restore individual objects back to production. So as soon as I click Stop Session, it's going to essentially shut the entire virtual lab down and because we're all finished with it. And it will clean up the redo logs, unregister the virtual machines, and unpublish them. And that's it. This virtual lab is ready to go if we needed to perform any more restorations in the future. If your organization needs any assistance setting up this functionality within Veeam Backup and Replication, feel free to visit our website at scalabilityexperts.com.